why don't you come forward? You understand global aphasia? What is the global aphasia? I had told you in the last class. Motor aphasia, sensory aphasia, both are affected. By the time of exam, some students couldn't understand the questions, didn't reply. Keep mum. That is global aphasia. Am I wrong? Today, I will start the excretory system. The excretory system consists of kidney, a pair of kidneys, ureter, pair of ureter, urinary bladder. Out of all, I will talk today the kidneys and suprarenal glands. Kidneys are bean shaped pair of kidneys which are located in the posterior abdominal wall. They are located in the posterior abdominal wall at the level of or their extent is extending from T2 T12 to L3 vertebrae. Look the diagram. This is the T12 and this is the L3 vertebrae. On each side of the vertebral column. This is the vertebral column on each side of the vertebral column. Now see this diagram. This is the upper pole of kidney. This is lower pole of the kidney. Same on both. Whether right kidney or left kidney. Second thing, this is the right kidney, which is slightly downward due to presence of liver on the right side, while the left kidney is slightly higher. When we talk of the peritoneum, by that time we use the word retroperitoneal organ. In retroperitoneal organ, first of all, we talk about the kidneys. So, the kidneys are a pair of kidneys which are bean shaped present on each side of the midline from the T12 to L3 vertebra situated behind the peritoneum in the posterior abdominal wall. That is the location of the kidney. Second thing, the kidneys, they are major excretory organ. They excrete the protein metabolism products and also carbohydrate. Besides this, they also excrete the excess of water and salts from the blood to outside. That is, it is the major excretory organ. And what are the excretion is done that I told you. When we talk of this, kidney, as I told you that it is bean shaped structure and the bean shaped structure is having the upper pole, lower pole and it is also having the borders, this is the lateral border and this is the medial border, having the two borders, lateral border and medial border and surfaces, the anterior surface and that is called present laterally, so it is called lateral surface and the posterior surface is facing medially, so that is also called medial surface. See the length of the kidney, this is the length 11 cm long, 6 cm in the width and 3 cm in the thickness. On the medial border of the kidney, see at the middle of the medial border, this portion is slightly depressed and it is having the hilum of the kidney. This is called hilum of the kidney. And another thing that C 
see the lateral border. Lateral border is convex, while the medial border is convex at its upper pole and at its lower pole. While it's the middle of the medial border, it is concave, where it is having the hilum of the kidney. Now look this diagram. This is the hilum of the kidney. In the hilum of the kidney, the structures entering or excreting are first thing, whenever we talk of the hilum of the kidney, we must know what is the anterior structure, what is the posterior structure. See, in the hilum of the kidney, the anterior structure is renal vein. Posterior to the renal vein, there is the renal artery and most posterior there is the pelvis of the ureter. Now what is the pelvis of ureter? Uppermost upper dilated part of the ureter. When we you will drill the ureter, you will find that uppermost part of the ureter is dilated. That dilated part of the ureter is called the pelvis of the ureter. So pelvis of the ureter is that is this one that is located posteriorly. So this is the position of the structures at the hilum of the kidney, renal vein, renal artery and renal pelvis. Now at the same time see the relation of the kidney. Yes, come inside, don't stand outside. The right kidney that is this part, it is related the upper pole of both the kidneys, that is this one, this one. That means upper pole of the both left and right kidney. Boys, bar gate kol ke unko bol do, andar bed jau. Aray, aap rena do book. Why don't you use your brain? Kita se kholo na, pichhe se. Lock it. Hello, better go. See the relations. The upper pole of both the kidneys, left or right, see this yellow color. That is related with the suprarenal gland. Then, the relation of right kidney, there the large area of the right kidney, upper part, is related with the liver. The part of the liver which is related to the right kidney is bare area of the liver and part of the right lobe of the liver. On the medial side, this is the area related with the duodenum. So that is called duodenal area, this one. And below the duodenal and this, on the right side, this is the colic area. And medial one, that is jejunal area. While on the left kidney, same suprarenal gland in the upper pole, then the part of the stomach that is crestic area. You are seeing the purple color that still this one is pancreatic area, pancreas, and downward the jejunal area, colic area. These are the anterior relations of both kidneys. Clear? Then see the posterior relation of both kidneys. The posterior relation of both kidneys are almost same, except that left kidney is related with the two ribs. See, as I have told you that left kidney is higher, so posterior surface of left kidney is related with the two ribs, while the posterior surface of the right kidney is related only with 12th ray. Below that, this is the area which is related with the diaphragm, dotted dotted structures. That is the area related with the diaphragm. Downward, you are seeing that this area is related with the two cranial nerves. Not cranial nerves, sorry. The iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal. The root value are L1. These are the two nerves related on the posterior surface of both kidneys. That is, 
hypogastric and ileo inguinal below this see the medial part of the both kidney that is related with the swas major muscle we have done the posterior abdominal wall you must know the muscles of back medial most is the swas major then comes the part of the quadratus lumborum and more literally there is the part of transverse abdominal so these are the posterior relation of both kidneys i think no problem till now okay then come to the part the capsule of the kidney kidneys are covered by the different type of capsule first one the renal capsule which is i am talking see the diagram this is the kidney surrounding by the two lines that is the part of renal capsule renal capsule is the condensation of fibrous tissue renal capsule is the condensation of fibrous tissue and this condensation of fibrous tissue is closely attached with the kidneys one thing very important that if the kidneys are normal the capsule is easily stripped off but if the kidneys are involved in the infection whatever the type of infection by that time the renal capsule is adherent to the kidney and cannot be easily stripped off that is important part in normal kidney the renal capsule is easily stripped off but in case of infection of the kidneys the capsule cannot be easily stripped off next to the renal capsule the second layer come the perinephric fat i am talking of this the perinephric of fat is surrounding the kidneys between the two layers the innermost is the renal capsule okay and outside this there is the part of renal fascia you are seeing the two arrows lines green color these are the part of renal fascia the space between the renal fascia and renal capsule is surrounding by the part of perinephric fat this perinephric fat which is surrounding the kidney is keeping the kidneys in position very important the perinephric fat they are keeping the kidney in position in case of the person who are suffering for long disease debilitated patients in which the perinephric fat dissolves in that case the kidneys are changing their position that we will talk later on floating kidney floating and the floating of the kidney is not side to side keep this thing in your mind kidney float karti hai lekin side to side nahi it is floating upside down the movement of the kidney also upside down in normal condition during respiration but that upside down is not so enlarged in case of when the perinephric fat is dissolved the floating of the kidney is very much next to the perinephric fat the third layer that is of renal fascia see these two arrows the renal fascia is consisting of two layers one is the anterior layer another is the posterior layer this renal fascia it is surrounding the kidney anterior surface then comes to the medial side and also surrounding the medial part of the kidney then it is continued to the part of the connective tissues or fascia surrounding the inferior vena cava and abdominal aorta dekhi 
I am telling you that the renal fascia is consisting of two layers, anterior layer and posterior layer. The anterior layer of the fascia is surrounding the anterior surface of the kidney, covers the medial surface and then it is surrounding or connecting, continued with the fascia covering the inferior vena cava and abdominal aorta. The posterior layer is also surrounding the posterior part and similarly continued on the medial side. The important point, the both the layers of renal fascia, they are separating from each other medially. But see the lateral, the two layers of the renal fascia are fused. Okay, both city what hold out. Renal fascia which is consisting of two layers. Okay, anterior layer and posterior layer. The anterior layer covering the anterior surface of the kidney passing medially and continued with the fascia covering the uh, and abdominal aorta. Similarly, the posterior layer is doing the same thing. Both the layers are separating on the medial side. While on the lateral side, both layers are few. one thing. See the upper part or upper pole of the kidney. On the upper pole of kidney, both the fascia, they are passing anteriorly and posteriorly. As they come above, what is here? You are seeing the suprarenal glands. So both the fascia, they are covering the suprarenal gland also. So when we will talk of the suprarenal gland, it is covered by the fascia, renal fascia. As they covered the suprarenal gland, the, both the fascia, anterior layer and posterior layer, they are blocked the suprarenal gland or separating the suprarenal gland from the kidney. Very simple thing. They kill anterior posterior insulagia above they come as they enclose the suprarenal gland then they fuse below and cover the suprarenal gland separately but the fascia which is covering the suprarenal gland are the part of renal fascia <coughs> see this diagram this is the diagram we have taken the sagittal section of the kidney. Sagittal section of the kidney, which shows the interior part of the kidney. I will show you in the dissection hall. Taking the sagittal section of the kidney, you will see with naked eye all these structures. Now, clear yourself what are these structures. This is pelvis of ureter. Pelvis of ureter as it comes into the interior part of the kidney, it divides into two or three major calices. So these are the major calices. So dilated part here, these are the major calices. So renal pelvis, it enters into the kidney and divides into either two or three major calices. So these are the major calices. Each major calyx is again divided into two to three minor calices. So these are the minor calices. Clear? No problem? Now see the part of the kidney. We are seeing the color, the yellow color, outer part, peripheral part. This is the cortex of kidney. You can see here also. The outer part is the renal cortex and below the renal cortex you are seeing the pyramid. These are the pyramid and these are called renal pyramid. Medullary part is showing the pyramid. The number of the pyramids varies and as the look any one pyramid towards the cortex they are dilated as they come towards the minor calyces they are becoming narrow so that narrow part of the pyramid we call epicenter or the apex of the pyramid the apex of the pyramid is opening into the minor calyx open into the minor calyx so this is the interior part of the kidney. See this structure or see this diagram. 
you will come across the kidney we divide this into two parts what are these the renal sinus the renal sinus is the space dilated space present in the kidney lying in the renal sinus the structures are renal vessels and pelvis of the ureter compare these two diagrams this is the structure where the renal pelvis is present and this is the diagram showing this is the hilum of the kidney and this is the interior space and this space is called renal sinus so lying in the renal sinus the structures are renal pelvis and renal vessels and the renal proper the renal proper is consisting of cortex part and medullary part the cortex part and medullary part they are showing the pyramids pyramids are present in the part of medullary part and cortex part is the outer part this is these are the structures which you can see in the naked eye by sagittal section of the kidney afterwards before talking of another thing i will revise the part of histological part when we see the kidney i don't know whether how many of you remember the slide picture of the kidney when we focus the kidney slide you will see this type of the structures this is the cortex part this is the medullary part and this is the renal sinus okay see in the cortex part what are the structures we find glomerulus the glomerulus is the top top capillaries what is the glomerulus top top capillaries and this top top capillaries is continued surrounded by the two layer of the bowman's capsule in the diagram the double layer wall this structure is called glomerulus when we talk of the kidney the kidney human kidney is consisting of million of nephrons then the problem arises the teacher asks you what is the nephron it is a functional unit of the kidney it is a functional unit of kidneys which are consisting of glomerulus and the tubules one is the system nephron is consisting of glomerulus and the tubules tubular system so we have talked about the glomerulus what is the glomerulus that is stuffed of capillaries surrounding by double layer of the ball of bowman's capsule all right now see the top of capillary or top of the what are the collecting system look here look the diagram very clearly this is the glomerulus and lower down you are seeing these tubules these tubules part is present in the cortex part this is called proximal convoluted tubule pct proximal convoluted tubule coming down in the medulla the proximal convoluted tubule is downward continued into the u shaped loop this u shaped loop is called loop of henle that ascending limb of the loop of henle is continued another tubule and this tubule is called distal convoluted tubule so distal convoluted tubule is now joining with the collecting tubules look here you are seeing these structures i am talking of these these are collecting tubules so what is the collecting tubules the collecting tubules they are connecting the distal convoluted tubule with the collecting duct you are seeing this large number of the structures i'm talking of this this is collecting ducts and collecting ducts is opening over the minor calyces so all these tubules they are forming the second part of the nephron proximal convoluted tubule 
and distal convoluted tubule, most of their parts are lying in the cortex. See the diagram. Okay. In the part of medulla, the part is collecting ducts, collecting tubules, and part of the distal convoluted tubule. All these they are lying in the part of medulla. So this is the histological picture of the kidney. The important other part of the kidney is blood supply of the kidney. Very simple. It is supplied by the renal artery. Renal artery is the branch of abdominal aorta. But in the beginning or in the children, the, double, the renal artery or the kidneys are receiving the artery. The lower pole is receiving the branch from the inferior part of the mesenteric part of the artery. Look this diagram. This renal artery, as it enters into the kidney, very important part. As the renal artery enters into the kidney, they divide into the two branches. One is the anterior branch coming anteriorly and one other the posterior branch coming posteriorly. The anterior branch of the kidney is dividing into the large number of the branches. And these branches, they are reaching to the different part lobes of the kidney. Look here, this diagram. This is upper, middle, lower, like this. My point is this, both anterior branch and posterior branch further divide and this division of the kidney is called the segmental artery. Segmental artery. The segmental arteries on the anterior surface of the kidney are, one is the, this one, this is apical, apical branch and then comes the part of the middle, this one, and this is the lower and inferior. So, the anterior segmental artery, it is giving the apical, upper, middle and lower branches. While the posterior branch is giving on supplying only the posterior surface of the kidney, one segmental branch, posterior segmental branch. The anterior branch or anterior segmental branch is comparatively larger. Anterior segmental branch is larger. The advantage segmental branch is, is if there is the the tumor or whatever the infection, we can remove that segment separately. That is the advantage of segmental branch or segmental division of the kidney. Koi be part segment, agar infection hota hai or maybe because of the renal stone collected there. So that part has been removed. That is the advantage of segmental branching. At the same time, look at the posterior surface of the kidney. Posterior surface of the kidney, what we find that the junction or the area of posterior surface which is in between the anterior branch anterior segmental branch and posterior segmental branch. That area is slightly avascular and that is called Brodel's line. I will show in the next diagram. That is called Brodel's line. So, if there is a renal stone, naturally we will operate the kidney. So, the incision can be given at broadal line because that is a vascular line. 
okay that i will come to the next at present see the diagram as i told you the renal artery the renal artery is giving the segmental branches and these segmental branches they supply the part of the kidney now look this diagram this is as the renal segmental arteries they coming into the part of the kidney they giving the lower arteries look this diagram lower arteries so one segmental branch may be the apical may be the middle or whatever as they reaching upward they give the further two or three lower arteries so these are the lower arteries and lower arteries as they reaching in between the pyramids what are these triangular structures pyramid as they reaching to the space between the pyramids this is called interlobular artery so this is the interlobular artery and see this part this is the cortex part of the kidney and base of the pyramid as the interlobular artery reaching at the base of the kidney they are giving the two branches which are running on the surface of pyramids so these are called arcuate arteries arcuate artery horizontal see the diagram then you can understand i am talking of this this is the lower artery lower artery is the branch of segmental artery and this lower artery is as it is reaching between the space between the pyramids it gives the interlobar artery that is called interlobar artery interlobar artery reaching at the base of the pyramids here it giving the two arcuate arteries dikh rahi hai aapko they are running on each side on the surface of the pyramid okay from the arcuate artery there is another branch arising which are passing on the cortex part of the kidney these are called interlobular arteries these are called interlobular arteries now see the diagram no anastomosis of the arteries neither of the arcuate artery anastomosis which it are neither lobar artery so because the renal artery and its branches are not anastomosis with each other this is called end arch so this is also the example of end arteries what are the end arteries the arteries whose branches are not anastomosis with each other that is called end arteries so up to this part is the blood supply is clear now what happens that interlobular arteries which are the branches coming from arcuate artery they are supplying to the cortex part of the kidney then the further thinner the wall of the further branches are very thinner the interlobular arteries are converting into the afferent alveoli afferent alveoli what do you see in the glomerulus tuft of capillaries tuft of capillaries consisting of afferent alveoli and efferent alveoli the efferent arteriole present in the tuft of capillaries are coming from the interlobular artery okay they are coming from the interlobular arteries and in the glomerulus the efferent arteriole further continued into the efferent arteriole and which comes out now tell me itna सब कुछ जाल बिछाने का पर्पस क्या वॉट इज दंक्शन ऑफ किडनी फिल्ट्रेशन तो एज द ब्लड सप्लाई इज रीचिंग इन दिस लेवल सो एट डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑल दिटी प्रोडक्ट एक्सक्रिटेड आउट आइदर ऑफ द प्रोटीन मेटाबोलिज्म कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबोलिज्म और एक्सेस ऑफ वॉटर और साल्ट right the function of the glomerulus they are filtering the kidney they produce the urine and urine formation then they comes out into the tubules 
proximal and more friendly than in distal convoluted tubule and finally to the collecting tubules and collecting. So that is the complete part of the procedure, how the urine is formed and what are the blood supply. So the division of the kidneys is also done in the segmental part and the segmental division of the kidney is done by the branches of renal artery apical, upper, middle and lower. You can understand this, this is the hilum of the kidney. Look, what is the anterior most structure? Renal vein, then renal artery and this is the pelvis of ureter. Now see this part. I am telling you that broadal slant. See, this is the posterior surface of the kidney. These are the anterior branches and this is the posterior segmental branch, posterior artery. As I told you, the renal artery as it enters into the hilum of kidney divides into two branches, anterior branch and posterior branch. Posterior branch supplying to the posterior surface of the kidney and anterior branch supplying to the anterior part of the kidney. The Medial two-third part of the kidney is supplied by the anterior branches. See this diagram. And posterior one-third part is supplied by the posterior branch of the renal artery. And see this line. The clear line. The junction of, on the posterior surface of kidney, junction between anterior two-third and posterior one-third part is Functionally, I am using the word functionally avascular. That means the very poor blood supply is there. On the posterior surface of kidney, Madam Liklo, I understand most of you are reading the Chorasia. The broadest line is the junction. It is a junction between medial two-third and posterior one-third part. And this is called broadal line. Broadal line is functionally, use the word functionally avascular. So whenever we open the kidney, maybe for taking out the stone or maybe another infection, that is the very important site for the surgeon to incise the kidney, open the kidney. Look here, this diagram, you can see the branches, anterior branch and posterior branch, how they divide and these are the segmented division of the kidney, apical branch, upper branch, middle and lower parts. And on the posterior surface, see this diagram, apical part, this is the posterior one third, yellow color and these are the anterior, upper and middle. And this is the broadal line. Here the clear up line, this is the broadal line on the posterior surface, not on the anterior surface. Then I come to the part of applied aspect. What is the nerve supply of kidney? From the renal axis. Renal plexus is consisting of sympathetic fibers, sympathetic fibers from T10 to part of L1 and the paras from the vagus nerve. Okay. Blood supply. Renal artery is the branch of abdominal aorta. In fetal life, it is also receiving the branch from NPA like artery. That is, sometimes it is persist in adult also. When the fetal artery of the supplying the blood to the kidney, it persists in the adult, that is called aberrant artery. It is not giving any problem. 
that is called aberrant RT and seen in 30% of cases. Now see this diagram. The lower pole of the kidney, of both the kidneys, they are fused with each other. The lower pole of the kidneys, see this diagram, lower pole of the kidneys of both the right and left, they are fused and teared. Such picture is called horseshoe shaped kidney. Horseshoe shaped kidney. So what is the horseshoe shaped kidney? The lower pole of both the kidneys are fused. And this is called horseshoe shaped kidney. And what happens in the horseshoe shaped kidney? See the diagram. What is this? Renal ureter, green color. Ureter is left anterior to this horseshoe shaped kidney. And another thing, look, this is the branch of the abdominal aorta, inferior mesenteric artery. Inferior mesenteric artery is also lying anterior to the union of the two poles. So that is very common, horseshoe shaped kidney, this one. See this another, this is called polycystic kidney polycystic kidney what happens in the polycystic kidney where the urine is formed in the glomerulus ok from the glomerulus then it comes into the tubules and then tubules to the collecting tubules collecting tubules are joining with the collecting ducts if there is any obstruction or congenital non-development of the collecting tubules. The urine will form naturally from the glomerulus, comes into the tubules, but they couldn't excrete out. The reason is due to defaulting or default in development of the collecting tubules. The urine cannot pass into the collecting duct and cannot be comes out so urine will collected in the tubules and these tubules then later on also develop the cyst forming the cyst and when we take the skygram of the kidney you will find that large number of the cysts are seen in the kidney you declare for rounded rounded structures this is called polycystic kidney. So what is the polycystic kidney? If there is a faulty development between collecting tubules with the collecting ducts or collecting ducts is not developed, whatever the reason, either the faulty development of the collecting tubules with the collecting ducts or collecting tubules are not developed. In this case, the urine as it is routinely formed by the glomerulus collected in the tubules, proximal tubules, distal convoluted tubules, loop of hand. And these tubules are filled up with the urine and later on they be converting into the cysts. So large number of the cysts are seen in the kidney. This is called polycystic kidney. Then second thing, the stone formation, renal calculus, renal calculus. And very important is floating kidney, floating kidney, F-L-O-A-T-T-I-N-T floating kidney. Floating kidney is developed when the perinephric fat, perinephric fat is dissolved in debilitated patient. Perinephric fat is dissolved in perin, in perin chronic debilitated patient.
this result into movement of the kidney downward as i have told you that the movement of the kidney is not side to side during respiration it also move up and down in floating kidney they comes down as they comes down the ureter becomes angulated the ureter becomes downward and there is angle of the ureter normally the ureter is opening i am not able to show you diagram normally the ureter as comes out from the pelvis part it is just like this but as this kidney will move down the ureter remain here so there is the angulation so that angulation is developed in the ureter then important part first of all when you become doctor the patient comes to you complain of the pain sab mere piche pain ho raha hai if the pain is in the renal angle if the pain is in the renal angle that is most commonly because of maybe the stone of the kidney renal colic that is called renal colic so when where you feel the renal colic the renal colic you feel at the angle between lower border of the 12th rib and lateral border of the what are the muscles of back of the body swas major quadratus lumborum and transverse abdomen and above that superficial is erector spine so at the lateral border of the erector spinae and lower border of the 12th rib the angle that is called renal angle so put your finger at the renal angle feel the patient will not allow you to touch here very painful and that is called so side where you feel the renal pain at the renal angle and what is the renal angle angle between the inferior border of the 12th rib and the lateral border of the erector spinae muscle that is called renal angle another thing in surface marking when you will do the semester exam we will also give you the surface marking not at present but in the pus because i am including the part of abdomen at in second semester second semester parts you know thorax brain and head and neck section b will be of head and neck and section a will be of thorax and brain i will not tell you question look the diagram this is the for surface marking of the kidney for surface marking of the kidney we draw the vertical lines and horizontal lines and the space this form is called morrison's parallelogram this is called morrison's parallelogram हेलो हेलो हाँ बोलिए बोलो जल्दी बोलो हाँ ठीक है ठीक यार मैं छुट्टी लेने की सोचता हूँ तो पहले मना कर देते हैं ठीक है this is called morrison's parallelogram for surface marking of the kidney we draw the morrison's parallelogram now how we draw the morrison's parallelogram look the 
two horizontal lines one upper at the level of lower border of the t level vertically draw the horizontal line the distance this is the mid line and second vertical line lower down the another horizontal line is at the level of l3 vertebra like this now the second thing ठीक है सर हॉरिजॉन्टल लाइन तो खींच लेंगे कितने डिस्टेंस तक खींचे दैट इज अबाउट नाइन सेंटीमीटर लुक हियर सो वी ड्रा द टू हॉरिजॉन्टल लाइंस अपर एंड लोअर अपर वन इज एट द लेवल ऑफ लोअर बॉर्डर ऑफ द टी लेवल बटी पी लोअर इज एट द लेवल ऑफ अपर बॉर्डर ऑफ द एल थ्री बटी पी द डिस्टेंस ऑफ द हॉरिजॉन्टल लाइन इज नाइन सेंटीमीटर from the midline okay no problem then we will draw the two vertical lines ye dikh rahi hai aapko the first vertical line that is this one is 5 cm 2.5 cm away from the midline measure the 2.5 cm mark here the point and join the two horizontal lines this is the first vertical line and second vertical line is again 9 cm away from the midline dekhiye this one is the second vertical line distance is 9 cm and the first one vertical line is distance 2.5 cm join these you will form this side the shape in this shape you draw the kidney you must know the shape of the kidney that is v shape so that is for the surface marking of the kidneys kis side karoge kis side karoge the diagram kidhar banaoge jaldi ha yes not on the anterior side draw this diagram turn the body on the back Sometimes the student do the mistake. They draw the lines and try to cut the mane. So, are you? Why kidney? Kider hoti in the posterior abdominal wall. So first of all, turn the cadaver and come see the back of the cadaver. Then you draw these lines. Morrison's parallelogram. Okay, so that is all about the kidney. Now I come to the part suprarenal glands. very simple look this diagram this is a kidney and you are seeing this green line that is the part of the renal fascia ye dikh raha hai aapko niche so downward the two lines of the renal fascia are separating from each other so ureter pass them very easily above see this part they are covered the kidney and the two layers they are covering the part of the suprarenal gland and after covering this uh, they are separating from each other dekhi and above that they are again joined together anterior layer and posterior layer join and they attach to the diaphragm attach to the diaphragm the same part look here this is the perinephric fat as i have told you the perinephric fat if it is reduced or absent in that case the kidney comes downward that is called floating kidney now see this diagram these are the kidneys as i told you previously that upper pole of both the kidneys right or left they are related with the suprarenal glands see the yellowish color structure the suprarenal glands are the pair of endocrine glands they are situated at the upper pole of the kidney the shape varies the right suprarenal gland is pyramidal in shape while the left suprarenal gland is sickle shape or 
see the another relation very important part of this posteriorly they are related with the diaphragm and medial side they are related the right kidney is the right supraduodenal gland is related with the inferior vena cava and rest of the part of it is that is related with the part of the liver the relation of the right supraduodenal gland that medially it is related with the inferior vena cava and then it is covered by the bare area of the liver and the part of the liver the left they are related anti posteriorly with the diaphragm and anteriorly they are related with the part of the stomach and the part of the splenic area and this the important the suprarenal gland as i told you that it is the consisting parts and these are the cortex part and medullary part the cortex part of the suprarenal gland is developed is also differentiate cortex and medullary part also developmentally differentiated the cortex part is developed from mezzo the while the medullary part is developed from neural crest medullary part is developed from neural crest another thing the cortex part of kidney it is secreting the hormones we divide this cortex part histologically yaad hai aapko it is consisting of three layers outermost zona glomerulosa then zona fasciculata zona reticulosa and medullary part zona glomerulosa is secreting the hormones mineralocorticoids and this mineralocorticoids you know that is maintain the water electrolyte balance of the body zona fasciculata is secreting the hormones cortisol which are converting the protein into the carbohydrates and this you know better have you read in the physiology sure what about the cns they have not started yet now oh and the part of reticulosa it is secreting the sex hormones estrogen and endogen the medullary part is secreting the hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine right oh all these are the hormones they are coming from this see the renal supply very important such as small gland is giving the problem it is supplying by the suprarenal artery that is branch of the inferior phrenic artery middle suprarenal artery that is the branch of abdominal aorta inferior phrenic artery inferior suprarenal artery that is the branch of renal artery it is supplying by the three branches and three branches origin is different superior suprarenal is the branch of inferior phrenic artery middle is the branch of abdominal aorta inferior is the branch of renal artery then the other important part the nerve supply it is supplied by the preganglionic fibers from the part of t10 to l1 and the major part it is controlled by the hormones acth which is secreted from anterior lobe of the pituitary gland adrenocorticotropic hormone which controls the major part of suprarenal gland 
ओके यू हैव कम अक्रॉस इफ दे देर इज अमेशन ऑफ द्यूमर इन द कॉटेक्स पार्ट कॉर्टिकल ट्यूमर दैट लीड टू द कंडीशन क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन सिंड्रोम इन विच very common in the females and the reason of it is the tumors may be lying present in the cortex part of supraadrenal gland in which this condition the patient will showing the fat development around the face neck abdomen but no deposition of fat on the limbs limbs are thin that is pushing the form second the condition in which the patient the secretion of cortical hormones are reduced addison's disease addison's disease what happens that the cortical hormones are secreting very less and the patient is called suffering from addison's disease what happens in the addison's disease in addison's disease the patient is showing weakness wasting of the muscles tiredness restlessness and low blood pressure pigmentation of the skin these are the factors seen in the addition species the third adrenogenital syndrome adrenogenital syndrome in which there is excessive development of part suprarenal gland excessive development of the suprarenal gland and that will lead the more development of sex, sexual factors it's to the development of secondary sexual characters more developed that is called addition species these are the relations which i have just told you the part of the suprarenal gland venous renaise very simple that they are opening into the part of inferior vena cava 